Okay, so here we have Ed Excel Physics AS level, Unit 1 for the summer season 2012. We call it June, but these exams are typically in May. Question about SI base units. Which of these is not an SI base unit? Distance, force, mass, time. Well, distance is force, remembers MA, mass times acceleration, so it's the complicated thing. Mass is a base unit, and time is a base unit, so we're talking B. Question 2 Displacement can be found from one of these things. This is again a standard thing. Um, remember, displacement is the area under a velocity time graph. So again, if you've just learnt your basic facts, that should be straightforward. Question 3. Uh, a wire of length x is stretched by a force f. The extension is delta x. Second wire of the same material, cross-sectional area, is stretched by the same force. If it has twice the length of the first wire, then its extension will be how much? We can remember, imagine this wire, this other wire, to be two copies of the first wire. So if the first wire, which is giving us delta x, you can imagine both of these copies of it will extend by an amount delta x because the force of tension acts all through the wire. So we're going to get 2 times delta x, which is answer C. Question 4. Uh, which equation shows a scalar quantity as the product of two vector quantities? Um, well, work here is the, the prime example. Work often comes up and energy often comes up in uh, attempts to identify that you recognize the difference between a scalar and a vector. Uh, work is the product of force, which is a vector and displacement, which is also a vector, but work itself is not a vector. A material can be drawn into a wire is described as being, that's the definition of ductile, this is just straight work. Stretch into a wire is ductile. So question 6 then, a bowling ball of mass 7 kilograms is travelling at a speed of 4 metres per second. Kinetic energy of the ball is one of these values. So we remind ourselves that the kinetic energy of an object is a half times m times v squared, which is a half times 7 times 4 squared. And that comes out to be 56 joules, which is answer C. This question is looking very familiar, uh, like it perhaps was in January 2012. Diagram shows an object on an inclined surface. The component of the weight that's parallel to the surface is how much? Okay, so this is a very slightly different version of the same question, where they're asking about the component of W. Now, if W acts like that, then it will have a component that runs into the surface and at right angles to that it'll have another component that runs along the surface. Now crucially if this guy here is theta then this angle here is 90 minus theta and since this whole thing here is 90 if this is 90 minus theta then this one here is theta so we get a theta in there. And just just take some time and check that with yourself. Um, follow through the fact that we've got a right angle here forming this triangle, which means that if this is theta, this is 90 minus theta. We've got a different right angle here, which means if this is 90 minus theta, this is theta. Okay, so just talk yourself through that. 
Now we're asked for the component of the weight parallel to the surface and that's this one. It's opposite to theta in this triangle. And remember opposite relates to the sine of theta. So W sine theta will be this one. Okay, so that's D. Okay, question 8 then. A stone is dropped from a bridge into a river. Which graph correctly shows the variation of gravitational potential energy with kinetic energy for the falling stone? So we just remember that um, gravitational potential energy for a falling stone will decrease and at the same time kinetic energy will increase. So we're looking for a graph that shows gravitational potential decreasing and kinetic increasing. So, you know, we can immediately rule out that one and that one, because in one case they're both increasing and in the other case one of them is a constant. Now, conservation of energy tells us that as the potential energy decreases, the kinetic has to increase by the same amount. And that is true for this graph, but it's not true for that graph, because we get big drops in potential energy in D for small increases in kinetic. So D is wrong, A is right. Question 9. A motor raises a mass M through a height delta H in a time T. The power of the motor is given by one of these expressions. Well, power is work over time. And the work done here is going to be the force on the object times the distance we've moved it in that direction. And we're dividing then by t. Equations are your friend. Okay, so answer C. Question 10 then. The graph shows stress strain for a piece of wire. And we're asked which point would give the value for a maximum tensile stress. Well, stress is here. The maximum stress, sorry, the maximum stress is the highest value it reaches. So it's C. And that's it.